Hi guys, welcome back. We are still on the weather application where we'll be using Daga and we'll be using the MVVM pattern to actually develop this application. Uh, the core uh, learning is for you to understand the basic uh, technology involved. It's not really about uh, the way the application is or it could be basic, but uh, let us understand how to uh, use all components, uh, major advanced components. Uh, when it comes to dealing with scalable mobile application. So here I'm going to be looking at uh, the APIs uh, that we're called and how we're going to actually uh, create the model which is called a POJO or data class when you're dealing with Kotlin and uh, at the same time how we're going to actually create the entity uh, for the database because we're going to actually observe uh, storage first before uh, the network. So uh, irrespective of the uh, of the state of the network uh, there should be data available for the mobile application so that's what we're going to be talking about in this particular video i usually use uh two major components uh let me say two major websites uh we have the json schema to pojo.org and uh, i also used uh the json formatter uh, where i'm going to actually pretty file uh my json because sometimes it could come in a modeled uh, form. So I need to actually look at each component, each tree, uh, each object, and even array if uh, it's deem fit. So um, we'll head straight down to uh, the API uh, that I'm going to be using. Uh, we have that as api.openweathermap.org forward slash data forward slash 2.5 forward slash forecast. Uh, we have been looking at the daily, uh, the daily forecast, and if you should notice the uh, the query sign, and uh, we're actually going to be having uh, up to four, three to four queries. Uh, the first is uh, the CT, uh, which is parry, and uh, we have um, for how many, like how, how many, uh, uh, the daily forecast you really want to look at. We have seven for, which is for weekly. And the unit, in what units uh, do you really want this to return? We have as that as metric. And you need to add your app ID, very important. That is going to be your API key. So you have to put that at the end of this uh, link. For that, you're going to have this fleshed out. So easily, you could see this is model up. And it really needs, sometimes you could bring in a plugin into, uh, into the, Google, the Google Chrome. And it's actually going to prettify this. But if you don't have the plugin, you could easily just copy this out and you go to your JSON formatter, it's there online. You, you paste that in and uh, you format to beautify uh, the, the JSON. You could see that and now I could see this much more better. So uh, we need some salient points here. We'll be needing uh, the name of the city definitely. We'll be needing the coordinates, which is going to be in, in light and long. And, uh, you, Irrespective of the details, you could actually generate, extract what uh, you need here. Yeah. Uh, the feels like, uh, the pressure, the humidity, and uh, even the weather itself. You could need a description, how clear the, the, the today is, and, and what a view. So actually, uh, you could um, format this. And uh, you, if you really want to create the project from this, instead of you uh, uh, picking each uh, key value or key, and uh, that could actually create a lot of uh, error for you. So you could easily just copy the bunch of these, or you could co copy the modeled one. Go to your JSON schema, the JSON schema rather, uh, at two pojo. Uh, you could just paste that in here. I usually use this a lot. When you paste that in here, you could give the package. You could just maintain the example you could change that later on uh, and the class name let me just give it um weather since we are we're looking at weather and the target language java the source type json uh the annotation type json that's what we're going to be used to actually format this you could um add a constructor if you like so you use double numbers you include the getter and setter because that's where you get to set and, and get uh, this is java so you need that uh Let's just do a preview for you to see 
how this is actually going to format and generate your JSON for you. It's very handy. I'll employ you to, to look at it. You could see different class generated. So from there, you could just copy this out and paste it uh, or create files that is going to actually uh, match each uh, of the classes. So that's just what uh, you do. Uh, with that, you generate something of this nature, which is the model, the CT, the coordinates, the daily forecast, uh, the fuse like so you have the serialized name and also the expose uh, if you if you, you could you could change the serialized name if you like but the serialized name must be the same with uh, the key of uh, the of the um, of the JSON so you could decide to change its private uh, values if you if you feel like but that serialized name must be the same it doesn't change and the resource we have that uh, as what we what we what we desire so now when you have your model you have that setup uh but let's just look at the api response or uh, the, the weather service itself uh, where you're going to actually create the retrofit uh, call now you have that as an interface uh you're getting you're fetching the for the daily forecast if you notice the url i have right here cut it over here it starts from the open weather the the api open weather map.org for slash data for slash 2.5 that's a constant it keeps coming up anytime you're making a call to the open weather map api so you just have to save that as a constant which you have that in the util as constants so once you save that as the base url you could see you save that as the base url and even you could add some other uh constant that would never change uh, often so that's just it back to the weather service we still have to call other uh, false trailing slashes. We have that as a forecast daily. So if you notice, it, it keeps going. Forecast daily. That's it. And now in retrofit, uh, there's a way you need to call the query. You need to actually uh, pull them right there in the query annotation. Look at it over there. The query annotation. The first is for which city. The second is uh, the numbers of days. The third is the unit and the fourth is the app id so what response are you expecting you're expecting a weather forecast uh which is going to be the start of the podio uh the weather forecast over here that's the entry point into uh the the podio itself so that's uh, that actually has uh the the cd and it has the list of daily forecast if you should notice look at it that's the list of daily forecast. So that's just it. And you wrap that around the API response. That's a boilerplate that is actually going to handle any response whatsoever. So it's going to actually get the status code and any response whatsoever. It's so appropriate for it. So it's going to actually get the body of that uh, message. That's the body of, of, of the JSON. So it's going to actually extract it for you. So you wrap it around the API response. Uh, cool. So that's going to make the first call which is getting the forecast for daily. And uh, we'll be talking about the UVI later on. So it's after you get the Latin long, with that you hit that back to the API and uh, you also pass your app ID and you get the UVI for that particular uh, location. So that's just uh, what you, we, you get the UVI. We'll talk about it when we're about to get the UVI for that particular daily uh, forecast. So that's about the retrofit core. And uh, we need to talk about the database. Uh, we need to save some of those records into the SQLite database uh, so that it's going to persist over the application. And uh, you need to create a, a package called DB. And uh, you need to actually start up your weather DB, uh, which is going to have the annotation of database and uh, the version. And if you're exporting the schema, probably want to export it out of the application. And um, you will need to extend the room database, as you could see. And you need a data abstract object, which is actually going to be where you're going to make queries to your database. So that's also very important. And uh, you need entities. Entities are like uh, the tables uh, where you're going to actually set up your columns, uh, as we have in the primitive uh, way of or the traditional way of creating or dealing with SQLite database. But now we're going to actually use two entities. Uh, that's two tables, uh, which is going to be for the safe daily forecast. Uh, for the uvi uh, let's get to look at how they look the safe daily forecast look at the entity so it's actually going to just depict uh in the beer uh java classes it's but it must have an annotation called at entity without this it's not going to actually uh be uh a compliant to uh the room database but once that it has it has an 
at entity annotation definitely uh, uh the room is going to actually see it as an entity and it's going to treat it as one so it's going to have the columns this is just the columns as you could see the lats long so we we need multiple of data we need the lats long we need the date itself we need the minimum temperature the maximum temperature the daily temp night evening morning how it feels like for day night evening morning the humidity the wind the description itself and the weather ID the couple with the image URL based on the web, with the weather image. So that's just what we need and you will create the set and get for each one of them. So that uh, gives us the safe daily forecast which is the entity uh, for the daily uh, weather. Back to the weather DB. So you need to add the entity you used over here. You could use a couple of entities, that's a couple of columns. So it doesn't, there's no limit of, of columns you could use and you could decide to also relate the relationship between our uh, uh, database or columns so that you won't keep having multiple uh, on uh, elongated columns so it depends on how you want so we're going to be dealing with two columns over here which are two tables rather which is the safe daily forecast and the uvi db let's get to look at the forecast da the forecast da is very important that's the data abstract object and you need to annotate that after you need to declare you're going to actually interact with the database uh, you could actually save to the database you could fetch from the database you could delete from the database you could also search from the database so let's look at how we're going to be dealing with it we need to insert the focus list uh, which actually we're saving a bunch of lists into the database and uh, you need you need to use the at insert uh, notation and you need to deal with the on conflict strategy so it depends if you actually use a, a primary key uh, so that it's not it's not going to keep uh we don't have duplicate copies of the data so so you could actually trigger the on conflict strategy or replace and uh you we have to and uh, start for the uv as well so now we're going to actually load forecast that you're, you're fetching uh from the uh save daily forecast uh table uh you're going to do, issue out a query called select all from the save daily forecast order by the date itself in the ascending order so that's how you actually select and you also select for the uvi db as well and you could delete from the db and you could delete from the uvi table so that's just uh, the basic way to create uh your your room database uh, uh structure so we we'll talked about the retrofit and uh, we we'll talk about about the db we also talk about the model used and uh we we'll talk about some constants uh you could use share preferences to save uh to persist data just uh, in the life cycle of the application so that you keep having uh, what to use. I will look at the app executors as well, which is going to help you to run uh, threads uh, in the background. So you could use the IO thread, you could use the, uh, the network thread and also the main thread. So it depends on the particular thread you want to use. So basically when you're saving to the database, it's uh, advisable to use uh, the, 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 the background thread so that uh, it's actually not going to freeze or block the UI thread. So that's just the way it is. Uh, you use the execute class to actually get that. You could uh, create multiple threads. Uh, for now, we're going to be using three threads uh, so that we're actually going to have a consistent and uh, a functional application. So that's, I'm going to stop it there for now so that I won't, have, I won't take all your time in this video. And the next video, we will dive into the dependence injection. Let's look at that and let's talk about uh, the the repository that's the juicy part of this application because we are actually not going to be issuing any query in the main activity it's going to actually happen in the repository so the repository is the source of truth that will let us know do we need to fetch data at this point in time or we need to just go straight to the database to pick up what, what we need so we'll be talking about that in the next video so don't go anywhere stay by and uh enjoy uh the delara studios